And no, your eyes aren't deceiving you. I used a blue marker this time because my black marker is running out of ink, so... I had to go with blue because it was either blue, red, or green. So, with that said... On we go. Alrighty, so it's Ravens week. It's the first of two meetings with the Baltimore Ravens. The team that's going to be the main contender for the AFC North title along with the Steelers. Um... Ravens had the bye week last week. They've had time to relax, to relax, rest up, it, get some injuries back. Plus, they're getting ready for the for the Steelers because they've they made some deals during the during the bye week. They traded for Yannick Ngakwe from the Minnesota Vikings, who was originally from Jacksonville. So now Baltimore has him and Calais Campbell to recreate that Saxonville defense from a couple years back. And they got Des Bryant signed from the practice squad. And, um, I mean, Des Bryant, I don't think, as far as I know, Des Bryant's not playing tomorrow, but that could change, but, yeah, Yannick, Ng Yannick Ngakwe, there's a chance that he's going to be in there tomorrow, and this is going to be, this is a, this is a big matchup for obvious reasons. Uh, if the Steelers win this game, they basically have a two-game lead over the Baltimore Ravens, but if the Ravens win, they pretty much tie the division right now. I think they would have the division lead because they've played everybody so far in the AFC North. And we haven't played Cincinnati yet. But, obviously, this is a big game for both teams. And, I don't know. I'm Like, last week, I didn't think the, ten, I didn't think the Steelers were going to win that game. Nor they probably shouldn't. They probably shouldn't have because they blew that week lead they had. And, they basically gave the Ravens enough there to potentially get use to potentially win this game and that's why I think the Ravens are going to win this first game. I do think the Steelers will get the Ravens at one point this season, but I think it's going to be when they play Thanksgiving night at Heinz Field. Especially when you consider that it's going to be Thanksgiving night there's going to be fans there at the stadium. So that should be a really big big game for the Steelers to possibly win there. I think they'll get them there, but I think the Ravens will have the upper hand tomorrow in Baltimore. And even though the Ravens right now aren't playing the best football that they play like they played last year, they're playing good enough football to get these wins. Plus, you've got to find a way to stop Lamar Jackson. You cannot make mistakes with the with the Ravens because one one simple mistake and they take control of the game completely, and you just have no chance of getting a getting a win out of there. They basically have become what the New England Patriots were for the longest time with Tom Brady. You make a mistake against them, and they're going to make you pay quickly. Now, that's not to say that this isn't going to be a close fight. I mean, these are two very good defenses going up against each other and two very good offenses, too. But, once again, you've got to find a way to stop Lamar Jackson because this isn't like facing Ryan Tannehill or Derrick Henry. Lamar Jackson is a double threat. And I've always said that the Steelers are going to regret passing on him when they when they they draft, the Ravens drafted him. And so far, they've done, so far it's been pretty... Pretty good on their part. The Ravens pretty much won a close one last year when the Steelers played that. When the Steelers played the Ravens last year with him under, under center, but then again, Ben Roethlisberger has yet to play against Lamar Jackson, and Ben Roethlisberger has been playing pretty good football for the most part, except for the three interceptions he threw last week. He's got to tone that down. So, I don't know. Maybe there's a chance the Steelers win. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be saddened if they don't. If the Ravens. W when in terms of my lose and win or lose, basically based on my predictions, but <laughs> it's but um but like I said, I don't think this is. I think the Steelers could win this game because they have shown signs that they're not playing down to inferior competition. They usually play very well with te with the Ravens, even if it comes to it, always comes down to the wire with them, and. I could see them winning, but for a prediction standpoint, I'm going with the Ravens because I think the Ravens are just going to have that upper hand. They've got the home field advantage. The fans are coming back into the stands. The first game, they'll have them there. I just think they're going to have a better chance of beating the Steelers in this one. But like I said, I don't think this... I'm, not, I'm saying right now, I don't think they're going to overtake the entire... Div is the inter the two battles between them. I think the Steelers will get the Ravens on Thanksgiving night at Heinz Field. But right now... I think the Ravens have a pretty good chance of winning this one, and I'm not going to su be surprised if they if the Steelers lose this game. I'm not going to be surprised. I'll be disappointed if they do, but yeah, I just think the Ravens have a better chance of winning this game tomorrow. So 
let's watch and see what happens, as, all, as I always say. Lines are subject to change. Make sure to check out the FanDuel Sportsbook app or website for the most up-to-date odds. Time now to beat the bus, Jerome. It finally happened. You finally caught up to me. We're all tied up in beating oh, the bus. Oh. oh, you were ready for this one, weren't you? Both of us are tied at 20 and 6 now. These two games behind. So, hey, it's a fresh slate here. We start with a big one. Steelers have the Ravens. Who you got? He said it. 
That shows you how good he is. They just have to find the rhythm with this team. A few different players, team study in the offseason, they'll be fine. And you got to love their defense, too. They give up the fewest points in the league, and they added to it this week with Yannick Ngakwe. I tell you what, he does such a great job, Jim. He's really unique with the way he does stuff. He actually rushes the passer from the outside inside. That's a steal, I think. All right, coming up on the NFL today, we're going to be learning a little bit more about T.J. Watt. As the NFL Today continues, we can't wait to bring this to you at the top of the hour on CBS. And here's the kick. Man, is that guy good. Well, that was about as bad as I thought it would. No, I take that back. That was worse. Like, what happened? They had one play. One play. The pick six from Lamar, J the Lamar Jackson pick six, Robert Spillane to the end zone. And then after that, they just, that was bad. That was really, really bad. I mean, I should have known. I know this was coming. I knew this was coming. As soon as they made a mis the Steelers made a mistake on offense, the Ravens took control of that game. Like, the fumble... The fumble by Chase Claypool, and then all of a sudden the momentum switched back to them, and it's and it's been there since the, since then. You saw the score seventeen seven. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming, but still, this is pathetic. This is absolutely horrible. This is the worst I've seen them play all year. Like they're not even trying to pl play up to the Ravens right now. And I know they're going to get the ball to start the second half, but you're down 17-7. to I mean, You don't give the Ravens a lead, a lead like that and expect to win this game. I mean, and the worst part about it is they've lost three players in this game. Two to injuries, Ronnie Stanley and Tyler Phillips on the offensive side, and then Matthew Jujon got ejected because he contact, illegal contact with an official. By the way, Marcus Peters should have been ejected too for the hit on Deontay Johnson, but... Why do that? I mean, it doesn't matter at this point because they're still beating the crap out of the Steelers right now. Ben Roethlisberger, the elbow he had surgery on last year, he's a, is, they're saying he's injured right now, and that's just the last thing you want to see right now. And Look, I, understand, I know. I know what I said yesterday. I know they said that the Ravens probably were going to take this game, but the Steelers can at least try to do something here. After that pick six, they did absolutely nothing. They couldn't get anything going. The only time they were in Baltimore territory was on that pe on that penalty that got Matthew Judon elected, ejected from the game. And then other, other than that, that's it. They just couldn't do anything. Like the punting's bad today. Why you why did you even bother to bring Jordan Berry back? I I don't know. I don't know. I mean. Like I said, the Steelers get the ball to start the second half. There's still 30 minutes left, but they got to make some changes, man. They got to make some changes in that offensive one. Is in that offense for the both offensively and defensively. Like the Ravens are just picking them apart right now. Let's get it, let's get it over with. Break it up and wow! By that much. By that much. Oh, that was so close. Wow. Two weeks in a row. But this one, unlike last week where Tennessee came back strong in the second half, this game was lived up to the hype, man. It lived up to the hype. And Steelers are 7-0. and the, St the Pittsburgh Steelers are 7-0. and I'm still baffled by this. I'm still really baffled by this. Largely because of how bad they played in the first half. They were terrible. But then in the second half, they just came together. And I think the play that did it was the Was that the Alex was it Alex Highsmith with the interception? I think it was. The Alex Highsmith interception in Ravens territory that really changed the complexion of the game around. I mean, Ravens came back, it was back and forth all the way, but Steelers did just enough to get the win and really I'm shocked. Like, last week, I was shocked because of how bad the Steelers were in the second half. I'm shocked at how good they were in the second half. They made some really good halftime adjustments. And...
the results show that it came down to a game of inches. They were so close. It was so close to be a penalty there to potentially win, keep, get the Ravens in, ter in territory to potentially win the game, bud. Oh, boy. That Thanksgiving matchup is starting to get all the more interesting, so... I can't believe it. I can't honestly believe it. We're 7-0 and right now. We've got pretty much a cakewalk schedule going forward. Dallas is next week. Jacksonville... No, Dallas is next week. Cincinnati is the week after that, and then Jacksonville, and then Baltimore on Thanksgiving night, so... There's a good chance the Seals could be 10-0 and by the time that second Baltimore game comes around. But this was a huge win for the Steelers. They're now two games ahead of the Ravens. They're pretty much the they're the kings right now of the AFC North. And assuming catastrophe doesn't happen, although there were a lot of injuries in this game, but looked like what you'd expect typical typical injuries that you would expect in the Steelers Ravens rivalry game. But things are looking pretty good. We will see what happens. Uh, common sense would tell you they wouldn't lose to a Dallas team that's looked as bad as they have, but. Stranger things have happened. I mean, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I think there's a good chance they will beat them next week. But like I said, this has been a weird year, and it's going to get a whole lot weirder, especially this week. So, like I said, enjoy it while it lasts. But the Pittsburgh Steelers are seven and zero, and they're looking pretty good right now. So, let's hope they keep it that way.